Transition matrices and similarity. What this section is doing is it's actually laying the foundation for the types of things that we're going to do in chapter 7 with the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors, but the whole sort of foundation of that is similar matrices. So I wrote a couple of notes up here. The first thing is, here's our goal. We want to find a transition matrix from one basis to another basis. So we might be going from the standard ordered basis to a different basis, or we could go from two non-standard bases. The question that I want to do, the first example, is find a matrix for the transformation that goes from R2 to R2, so same dimension for each one. The transformation is defined this way. X minus 2Y, 4X maps to X and Y. Except this time, my new basis is negative 2, 1, negative 1, 1. Okay, so I've got a transformation, I've got a new basis, and I want a matrix that transitions from one basis to another. All right, so step one. Let's find A. Matrix A is the standard matrix for the transformation. We've done this a couple of times already. We're going to line up our X's in one column and our Y's in the other column. So the first one has 1X and negative 2 Y's. The next one has 4X's and no Y's. Okay, so there's our standard base matrix. All right, the second thing is I want to set up a change of basis matrix. Remember how we do that? This goes back, I think, somewhere in Chapter 4, where you set up the new basis, the old basis, and then you row reduce until you get the identity matrix on one side and the transformation matrix on the other side. So the new basis, the basis B prime was given as negative 2, 1, so that first vector goes down the first column, and then negative 1, 1 goes down the second column. And then we put the identity matrix, which is our original basis over here, right? Because our original basis is 1, 0, 0, 1. That's the standard ordered basis. I'm going to row reduce this on my calculator. And I'm going to get something that looks like this. 1, 0, negative 1, negative 1, 0, 1, 1, 2. Okay. That means that this matrix here was P. And this matrix over here is P inverse. P inverse is the matrix that takes us from B to B prime. So it takes us from the standard ordered basis to that new basis that was up there. All right, step three is I need a formula. And that formula says that the transition matrix A prime for T relative to B prime. All right, so the original matrix up here, that 1, negative 2, 4, 0, that's the transformation relative to basis B. That's the standard order basis. What I'd like to do is I would like to find the transition matrix A prime for the transformation relative to B prime. And the formula goes like this. A prime is equal to P inverse times A times P. Well, I have all those matrices already, right? P inverse is the one that was up on the top here, the negative 1, negative 1, 1, 2. Matrix A was the original matrix for the problem, 1, negative 2, 4, 0. And then matrix P is the one that was on the left side in the previous step, right? So that 2, negative 1, 1, 1. Multiply those three things together, and I'll get A prime. Working from left to right, let's multiply the blue matrices first. So that'll give me a 2 by 2. Negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. Minus 4 is negative 5. Positive 2 plus 0 is 2. 1 plus 8 is 9. And then negative 2 is my fourth entry. All right, now we'll multiply it by that green matrix. Let's double check. Yeah, I left out a negative sign. That should be a negative two up here. And so now we'll multiply this matrix here by negative two, negative one, 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 and let's see what we get. Negative five times negative two is positive 10. 10 plus two is 12. 
That'll give me then positive 5 plus 2 is 7. Negative 18 minus 2 is negative 20. And negative 9 minus 2 is negative 11. This matrix here is a prime. That's what I want. That's the matrix that transitions me relative to the new basis. It turns out that what we've created are actually similar matrices. And that if I have a setup like that where A prime equals P inverse times A times P, that's how we create similar matrices. So matrix A and A prime are what we call similar matrices. Here's the definition, which usually I do not write the definitions out. I say, you know, they're in the textbook. You can grab them there. But this is an important definition. Two matrices, two square matrices, A and A prime, are similar when, you know that backwards E means there exists, an invertible matrix P such that A prime equals P inverse times A times P. So it's these two matrices here that are similar to each other. Any matrix is similar to itself, but if you can find a matrix that is, for example, similar to a diagonal matrix, then good things will happen because some of those properties from one carry on to the other, even when the matrices don't look the same, you're really finding them relative to a different basis. So let's take a look at this example. Suppose matrix A is the matrix 1, 1, negative 2, 4, and matrix P is the matrix 1, 1, 1, 2. Find A prime, which is a matrix similar to matrix A. All right, well, the first thing is it says it's true they're similar when an invertible matrix P exists. So the first thing is, does P inverse exist? Let's find out. Take the determinant of P, 1 times 2 is 2, minus 1 times 1 is 1. Oh, how easy could that be? The determinant is 1. Meaning that P inverse, all I have to do is I have to switch, negate. And then we're going to multiply P inverse times A times P. So my matrix A prime will be P inverse times A times P. So P inverse times A looks like this, 2, negative 1, negative 1, 1. A is 1, 1, negative 2, 4. So multiply those things together. 2 times 1 is 2, plus 2 is 4. 2 times 1 is 2, minus 4 is negative 2. Negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3. And negative 1 plus 4 is 3. Now take that answer and multiply it by P. So let's take, I'm just going to cheat a little bit and take this piece here and multiply it by P, which is 1, 1, 1, 2. And that gives me 4 minus 2 is 2. 4 minus 4 is 0. Down the bottom, negative 3 plus 3 is 0, and negative 3 plus 6 is 3. Oh, look at that. Here's a similar matrix that is actually a diagonal matrix because I took it relative to a different basis. All right, let's take a look at one more, and some of these calculations I will be doing on my calculator just because I'm going to do a 3 by 3. So let's look at this. Suppose that matrix A is given as 1, 3, 0, 3, 1, 0, 0, 0, negative 2. And I want to find the matrix T relative to this new basis, where B prime is the basis 1, 1, 0, 
one, negative one, zero, 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 one. All right. So in the last case, I gave you the matrix P. In this case, I did not give you the matrix P, but I gave you the new basis. When I perform this operation, I will come up with a similar matrix. So the first thing is, let's find matrix P. which goes from the old basis to the new basis. So I'm going to put my augmented matrix like this. I'm going to drop the columns down. 1, 1, 0 is my first vector. 1, negative 1, 0 is my second vector. 0, 0, 1 is the third vector. And then I can put in 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. Now, I'm sort of setting up what's coming in a future step. You realize that I already have matrix P. Matrix P is right over there. The next step, then, is to try to find P inverse. If I want to find P inverse, it's actually easy to find the determinant if you go down this last column. So rather than going across the first, I can go down the bottom row also. So you could do zero times the two by two up here, zero times the two by two that are formed by one, one, and zero, zero. Both of those will yield zeros. And then you'll end up with one times one times negative one minus one times one. So your determinant is negative two is invertible. All right, to save some time, I'm going to throw it on a calculator. I could also row reduce it to get P inverse over on the other side. It turns out that P inverse is equal to this. One half, one half zero, one half negative one half zero, 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 one. Now, if you want a little practice on your calculator, I'm going to give you something to multiply. You pause the video, you multiply, and then come back and see if we get the same answer. So now I want to set up my formula that A prime is going to be P inverse times A times P. So your P inverse is sitting right here. Your A was the original matrix that was given to you. And then P is the matrix that was here on the left side when we set that up, right? So if I go all the way back to the beginning, I've got my A, I've got my P, I've got my P inverse. Throw those three matrices into a calculator and see what you get for A prime and see if anything's interesting. All right, just throw those into a calculator. Here's what I got when I threw mine in. I got four, zero, 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 negative two, zero, 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 negative two. Okay. It's a diagonal matrix, and this is similar to the original matrix A, because I can write them as P inverse times A times P. This is setting up what's coming up in the next chapter, which is right now I created a diagonal matrix by giving you the new basis and saying use this basis to come up with the diagonal matrix. In the next chapter, you're going to have to figure out what the basis is in order to get the diagonal matrix. So in this, these couple of problems, I did the work of figuring out what kind of basis would produce a diagonal matrix that's similar to the original one. In the next section, uh, not next section, the next chapter, you're going to figure that out as you go along, and that's the process of eigenvalues and eigenvectors.